Hey everyone, how are you getting on? My name's Ryan, that's Ben, and today we'll be talking to you about the Agile and Cognitive Cloud Edge Continuum, or AC3. Don't ask what happened to AC1 or 2. <laughs> yeah, so to give a brief uh, uh, talk about the project, uh, so we're part of the Horizon, e oh, Horizon EU Research Grant, or the, also the IRIG team, that stands for the, Irish, the Ireland uh, Research Interest Group. So we're part of one of four projects, uh, AC3 is yeah, obviously one of the four projects. Uh, the others are Encode, Codeco, and Green Dot Dat. Uh, the project officially started, the AC3 project officially started in May 2023, and then the iRig team formed in September 2023. So that's when we joined the project. Yeah, so to give you a few buzzwords before we get into the main stuff, um, I'd say I suppose Agile, which means the system that can adapt to change in conditions, uh, Cognitive, which is the ability for the system to make well-informed decisions uh, without human interaction. Uh, through this is done through deep AI integration. And then Cloud Edge Continuum uh, refers to the range of environment options uh, the system leverages from cloud data storages, uh, sorry, data centers to IoT devices. And this is done on the far edge and everything in between. And then federated infrastructure. Uh, so that basically it pools together resources across different environments for shared use. Yeah, so what is AC3 then? So essentially it's a federated cloud edge infra infrastructure with uh, deep AI integration. So the AI is managing resources across a network of uh, different computing environments. So these can be uh, in a platform agnostic way as possible. So these can be anything from uh, cloud to edge to far edge devices and it shouldn't matter whether uh, the clusters installed on them are from different platforms. Um, the federation layer should provide the interoperability. So it manages all aspects of an application's lifecycle. So this can be anything from uh, retrieving or storing data to scaling or migrating microservices. And then the network is configured both proactively and reactively based on AI predictions. And the, f uh, the project has a big focus on green energy. So this could mean uh, migrating microservices to the most green and efficient source of energy. So how do we know if we've actually achieved what the project is setting out to do? So the first thing is it'll manage uh, both application life cycles and the actual infrastructure itself uh, without any human input. It'll provide an integrated data management platform where developers can easily access their data. Uh, the federated model provides resource sharing which enables stuff like uh, distributed workloads. And then we have end-to-end -end network programmability. So the system is going to be able to onboard new environments, uh, install clusters on them, and link them with other clusters. So zero touch management is one of the key features of AC3. So I'll go over that, um, the components which made that possible. So the first one here is the AI-based LCM, which is the lifecycle manager. Um, and it makes decisions based on a few other components input. So the first of these is the application profile. And this basically details all the important information about the application uh, you're trying to deploy and its microservices. Uh, this could be anything from like application behavior, uh, traffic trends, performance. And then we have similar profiles for the actual uh, AC3 infrastructure itself. Um, so this, this could detail things like network links or types of energy use. And then obviously we have real-time monitoring, which is constantly uh, providing input about how the system is, at, uh, the microservices or the applications are actually performing in real time. And so with all of these coming together, uh, the LCM can make well-informed decisions about the current and predicted state of the infrastructure and the applications that are running on it. So this is a high-level uh, architecture diagram so I'll quickly take you through it and hopefully you'll have a better understanding of what the system actually looks like. So first we have, uh, we define the key performance indicators and the ontology and semantic aware reasoner um, makes an application descriptor which helps the LCM with the initial deployment of the application on microservices. Then we move down to uh, where the decisions are made. So again, this is the AI based LCM which is uh, <coughs> um, respons 
the, yeah, it's basically the brain of the system and it's responsible for making all the decisions. So like I said, it uses the profiles and the management to make the decisions and then passes these decisions uh, to the adaptation agents through the decision enforcement module. So the adaptation agents uh, translate the requests for the infrastructure sites uh, in, well into, into instructions that the infrastructure can actually understand. And then the resource uh, broker and discovery modules uh, like allocating and exchanging information uh, resources throughout the infrastructure. And then finally we have uh, the actual infrastructure sites themselves and this is where the microservices or applications are actually deployed. And throughout the whole process we have the dat data management uh, platform up at the top <coughs> right. And this basically just makes all the all the data that the applications needs available. Sorry, pass you over yeah. yeah, so I'm just going to go over what uh, Red Hat's role is in uh, network programmability. Uh, yeah, so basically HC3 passes its decisions and actions uh, either through Kubernetes or SD1 uh, using the local management system, local management uh, systems uh, through a northbound interface. Yeah, so these actions are initiated by the Kubernetes API uh, on the federated control plane or by the SD1 controller, you see there. Um, these will just make, which in turn will just make changes to the network. And then uh, this could be including creating, or could just include creating or removing scupper routers uh, or submarine or gateways. Uh, this could be migrating application pods to another cluster or onboard an infrastructure site. Uh, yeah, so we have multiple ways of uh, connecting clusters. We can use some Mariner uh, uh, done through the OCM or the Open, clu open Cluster Management System, like I said before, or a scupper link or even uh, an Istio mesh. And once these links have been set up, applications or microservices uh, can be migrated uh, by clusters based on the most efficient placement options. Yeah, so just to talk briefly about the network programming tools, so the ones we're using right now, so scupper. Uh, which creates a uh, routing component from one namespace to another, uh, which tunnels traffic. Uh, Submariner, so uh, which enables pods in different clusters to communicate with each other, uh, rather at uh, network level rather than application like Scupper. And then Netscaler uh, acts as an application specific traffic balancing uh, method to distribute, optimize, and secure layer 4 to layer 7 network traffic. And then Everyone, which is an e open source version of SD1, uh, dynamically manages and optimizes network traffic. Uh, provide secure, reliable, and efficient connections between non-Kubernetes clusters uh, and fine-grained control over the network. Yes, yeah, so OpenShift operators. So basically our goal is to build an OpenShift uh, operator that will control the state of the clusters and be able to create, delete, uh, create or delete uh, network links uh, at the AI-based LCM. So we will use OCM uh, to orchestrate multiple clusters across various networks, or sorry, various onboarded infrastructures. And then OCM also uses Submariner to link uh, clusters by default, meaning our main concern is manipulating scupper links uh, through CRDs. Yeah, so one of the project's main use cases, uh, which Red Hat is actually a lead of, is processing massive, and I mean like hundreds of terabytes of astronomy data. Um, so this is produced by an observatory in Gran Canaria and we're collaborating with the University of Madrid um, to basically f figure out a w an efficient way of processing all this information. So <coughs> the software that is being used by UCM is Starlight, and Starlight can be containerized as a microservice and deployed on the AC3 infrastructure, and the processing is going to happen in a dis distributed and parallelized way so slices of a workload can be processed by different nodes on various sites, and the results are going to be stored and pieced back together uh, on a shared volume. So this is kind of the architecture that uh, we came up with to do that. Um, so the main issue that UCM kind of faced on the technical side was actually processing all of this data efficiently. So Starlight accepts a large input file with massive amounts of parameters, um, processes it fairly slowly, and then the application stops and must be restarted with another big input file. So we wanted to improve that efficiency. Um, and we didn't really want to have to dive into Starlight 
itself and start changing their own codes. So we came up with this um, kind of simple producer consumer queue uh, architecture model. So on the screen, you can see that. And on the left here, we have the uh, pro producer pods. So we have one container in here, uh, the event producer, which is basically looking at an input file, chunking it into events, and then uh, publishing those events to the rabbit MQ you can see here. So each one of these little green chunks is an event which has been sent to a processing pod. And then in each processing pod, we have two containers. We have an event receiver that is going to basically take in the chunks or events, uh, write them into a file that Starlight can actually understand, um, and save that file to the shared volume. So then the Starlight container in the processing pod will take that file, process it, set a flag to say that it's actually processing something at the moment it can't take any more. And then once it's finished processing, it'll remove the flag and star, uh, star the results in here. Sorry, in here. Uh, and then once, all, once the whole workload is finished, it can all be pieced back together. Uh, yeah, so like we said, it's a new project and we started uh, back in May 2023. Um, if you saw anything here today that might interest you, maybe your technologies, or if you want to get involved in the project yourself, that'd be great. Uh, we're always taking on uh, new partners. Yeah, and thank you. Any questions? That was great. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> I can tell you the dimensions. So, uh, oh yeah. so what the, the question was, what, um, do, we, do we know exactly what island oh. the, the observatory is on? And I don't, but I know it's called uh, Le Rock, uh, Rock Le, Le Dos Muchachos or something, the actual <laughs> observatory itself. This is why I didn't include the, na the name of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm not sure exactly what island it is. I looked it up and it said Grand Canaria, so that's the one I went for. <laughs> Any other questions? Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you